In my efforts to reorganize, cordless tools are now on the chopping block. Each tool will have its own designated home in this simple yet effective storage solution. Magnets are going to play a role in this build and we also come up with a very effective way to hold the heaviest of tools. Welcome to another episode of Hyper Organization here at A Glimpse Inside. You want to see how I made it? Let's go! So just a refresher on what exactly a French cleat is, well it's two adjacent 45 degree angle pieces mounted to a variety of things used for storage on a vertical surface. You're only limited by your imagination on what you could come up with to hang almost virtually anything. And in this episode, cordless tools. Now, what you see here, I've got a piece of plywood laid out. I'm making a few marks where I think the best position is to lay some strips that are going to actually support all of these cordless tools. Again, the backer board you saw earlier was 3 8 of an inch, and these pieces are 3 quarter inch ply. And what I'm doing here on the crosscut sled is I'm angling one side to kind of give me an angle of about 10 degrees upwards for each of the arms that's going to stick out to support the tools. Of course, you can do this by hand, but I happen to bust out the old disc sander and I'm putting a slight chamfer on all these pieces just to kind of soften the edges. Again, I'm using a French cleat. As you can see here, the back bevel is towards the top of the piece. I'm using wood glue and CA glue in combination to give me a strong hold before I tack it in place with some brad nails. Again, I always recommend alternating slight angles when you're brad nailing pieces together. It just gives you a stronger bond that's less likely to come apart. Extra blocks and extra cleats are made for the second cleat down to give this structure a bit more support. I simply slide them in once it's installed up top. I brad nail them in place, no glue necessary, and this is going to keep the piece a bit more rigid on the wall. So at this point, I'm picking it up back and forth, making sure it's a good hold, and it looks good. However, it can look better. So what we're going to do, we're going to rip down some 3 8 inch plywood along with some 3 quarter inch ply, and we're going to frame the entire panel. Now, is putting a frame around this necessary? Absolutely not. You can do it however you want. However, in my previous video, I mentioned I want this to feel like a maker's sanctuary, and these little details are gonna help me achieve that goal. And speaking of goals, if you wanna outfit your shop with some of the best clamps on the market, I definitely recommend checking out Pony Jorgensen. They have reinvented themselves with a brand new line of an assortment of clamps, and they are absolutely fantastic. Everything will be linked down below. Thank you again, Pony Jorgensen. Let's get back to the build. And with that, the frame is complete, and now it's time to install the arms that are going to support the tools. So using the reference marks I made earlier, I'm simply drilling a hole in the middle of where each of these arms is going to be installed. The hole is going to then be a visual reference on the back of the piece to where I know exactly where to install these screws. You can see here I encountered somewhat of a problem. One of the countersink holes I couldn't achieve because why? Well, it was underneath one of those cleats. So I clamp another cleat up underneath it, take a Forstner bit, drill it out, countersink achieved and we lose no structural integrity by drilling that small hole. So I know this isn't the absolute strongest method to attach these arms to the front of this piece, but CA glue and activator are simply going to be a temporary bond for me at this point. I'm then going to come around to the other side, I'm going to pre-drill some holes and then I'm going to put some inch and a half screws all the way through countersinking those as well. I mean after all, I'm not building a rock climbing wall at this point, I'm building a structure to hold tools, okay, so it's going to work just fine. Incorporating a magnet strip at the bottom is going to do one of two things. One, it's going to let me support that angle grinder a bit more because the metal of it is actually adhered to the wall. And secondly, readily available square lock, Phillips head, and star bits are good to go and they're always going to be close at hand. So this was definitely my favorite part of this build. My favorite challenge of this build was getting the circular saw up onto the wall that was safe and effective. So I have this idea. I'm incorporating these stop blocks on these little pieces of 3 quarter inch plywood and I'm going to nibble away some material to kind of create this bracket type piece. I simply make some marks that way I know exactly where to put these pieces that are specific to the size of my circular saw. As you can see here, CA glue and activator. I come back over on the other side and reinforce it with some brad nails and it looks like it fits pretty nice. I cut a few side supports. I go ahead and hand sand them to make them feel nice and soft and install them with glue and brads. At this point, I take the entire piece to the crosscut sled and trim it to size. After a little sanding, I realize I need a half blind semicircle cut out of the piece that's going to incorporate the stop block that's going to hold the base of the saw into that little bracket. So this is why this was the most fun part of the build for me. I had to follow my nose, referencing the tool that I was building it for, and the results turned out great. The saw slides up, fits in there safely, and when I need it, it's simple to take out. So this is the last piece of the build. This is going to be the charging station or where the charger is going to fit into this cleat. As you can see here, I'm just using the compression method. There is no glue on those pieces, just screws. But first, let's go ahead and load up the rest of the drills. Well, it's just about filled up, but it's time to put the impact drivers and drills in. And let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to put impact driver number one in here. Awesome. And now number two is going to go there. 
Perfect. Now the drills. Let's go ahead and put the first drill in now. And now the second one. Well, I think that looks fantastic. Now it's time to install the charger. We're gonna plug it in by throwing the cord across the room and success. Now this drill is good to go. But all those shenanigans aside, I think it turned out great. And let's take one more closer look at it before we go. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me for this one. This is one of those projects, it's a small project, yes, but it's part of a massive series that I'm doing here for hyper-organization around the shop. I hope you got some good tips and tricks out of this one as well. Also, I wanna thank Pony Jorgensen for sponsoring this video too. Without them, honestly, I wouldn't have this professional set of clamps in the shop and all their products are linked down below as well. Also, my Patreon supporters, you guys rock. I'm humbled every day that you want to donate to our cause. And if it's for you, again, no pressure, but the link will be down below. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I'm always going to invite you to subscribe. There'll be a few more videos over there. My name is Chris. This has been A Glimpse Inside, and we'll see you on that next one.